Okay, lesson one, five complex numbers. Please make sure you have the lesson number and title. Our objective here is to add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers. All right, so in order to write complex numbers, we need to recall imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers were developed to be able to take the square root of a negative. So recall from algebra two, the square root of negative one is equal to i. If you're asked to simplify a square root, 100 is a perfect square, so I know the square root of 100 is 10. To simplify the square root of a negative number, last year you would have looked at it, looked at it as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 100. The square root of negative 1, that is our imaginary number i, and then the square root of 100 is 10, but we would write that as 10i. You do not need to go through these steps here. If you know 100, if you know what the square root simplifies to, and because there's a negative underneath the radical, you just need the imaginary part to it. Okay, square root of two times square root of two. If I ask you to simplify this, properties of square roots, I can multiply what's underneath. So the square root of four will just give me two. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 would become the square root of 25, so that simplifies to 5. So notice the pattern here. Square root of x times square root of x is square root of x squared. So x is positive, then the square root of x squared would simplify to 0. If x is negative, we would need imaginary numbers, and we'll talk about this. We have an example of this later in the video. Okay, so these are very important. If i is equal to the square root of negative 1, then imagine squaring both sides of the equal sign. i squared would be equal to negative 1. If we use our properties of exponents, then i cubed would be equal to i squared times i. Replacing i squared with negative 1, i cubed would simplify to negative i. Sorry about that. And then i to the fourth, if I think about that as i squared times i squared, if i squared is equal to negative 1, Negative 1 times negative 1 would give me positive 1. You can attempt to simplify these other 8, um, but we will do these in class. So if you just want to leave room and copy them down, we'll simplify them in class. All right, if a is greater than 0, then the square root of negative a would be equal to i times the square root of a. That's the first thing we simplified. We've used this already, square root of a times square root of b. As long as my roots are equal and I'm multiplying, I can multiply the values underneath. So this would become square root of a times b. And then we use this one already, square root of a times square root of a. What was that intermediate step? That it became square root of a squared, and then that was equal to a. Notice that a has to be positive, okay? All right, so when I simplify these, square root of 36, that is a perfect square. I see my negative there, so I can just simplify this to 6i. 6 is not a perfect square, nor does it have a perfect square factor. So the only thing I can simplify is the square root of negative 1, which is i, and then the 6 stays under the radical. When it becomes a perfect square, notice we put the real part, then the imaginary part. When the radical doesn't simplify, notice we put i first, then we put the, the radical there. Okay, square root of 6i. We don't want to confuse if the i is underneath the radical, so you'll always see it written as i times whatever is underneath the radical. Okay, square root of negative 16. That simplifies to 4i. Square root of negative 4, that simplifies to 2i, and I am allowed to then multiply these. So I get 4i plus 6i. 
Treat the eyes just like like terms, so this becomes together 10i. That would be our final answer. Square root of negative 25 would be 5i minus 7 times square root of negative 9 would be 3i. Okay, multiplying to get negative 21i. Now we can subtract complex numbers, these imaginary parts, just like they're like terms, negative 16i. When you have two radical two values that are negative, you cannot simply multiply what's underneath and then take the square root of that. Okay? The property, remember, was that if a is greater than zero, that's when I'm allowed to multiply what's underneath. If they're negative, you first have to simplify them using i. So square root of negative 4 would be 2i. Square root of negative 9 would be 3i. When I multiply these together, I get 6i squared. And then recall that we determined i squared was equal to negative 1. So this becomes 6 times negative 1. So this answer actually evaluates to negative 6. Notice if you multiplied underneath, these two answers are not the same. Okay, so if a is negative, you first have to simplify that negative radical, then you're allowed to multiply them. Okay, so complex numbers are in the form a plus bi. where a is the real part and b, notice b, the coefficient to i, that's your imaginary part. So when I look at 3 minus 4i, my real part is 3, my imaginary part is negative 4. 2.5 plus i root 2. My real part is 2.5. My imaginary part is square root of 2. Okay, the imaginary part is whatever number is being multiplied by the i. 5i is a complex number. It's just a complex number with a real part equal to 0. Okay, imagine this is 0 plus 5i. So then my imaginary part is 5, the coefficient to the i term. Okay, some properties, um, you can write these down, the properties up here, but just take a minute and look what's happening. If I'm adding two expressions, I combine like terms. So I'm going to add the real parts, that's a plus c, and then I'm going to add the imaginary parts. My imaginary parts in each complex number are b and d. Now when I'm subtracting, Students have a tendency to forget that this becomes minus C minus DI because I have to distribute that negative sign. So now when we combine like terms, it's actually A minus C, which is what we have here, and then B minus D, which is our imaginary coefficients. Okay, so adding these two complex numbers together, 5 minus 3 gives me 2, negative 2 plus i gives me minus i. Now when I subtract, you can do that intermediate step of distributing the negative for yourself. Negative 1 minus 1 gives me negative 2, 3i minus 2i gives me a positive i. We'll do that one in class. You can copy it down and then, just like the previous ones, you can attempt it or we'll just do it together in class. Just make sure you leave room for it. Okay, same deal, multiplying complex numbers. You can multiply complex numbers just like they're real numbers. Distribute whatever value might be out in front of the parentheses. So for number nine, distributing the six, I have 24 minus 30i. And for number 10, distributing now to 6i, I have 24i minus 30. Now I have i times i, so that becomes 30i squared. 
Recall, i squared can be replaced with negative 1. So I have 24i minus 30 times negative 1. So 24i plus 30 would be my final answer. And one thing that we'll talk about in class, let me go backwards here. When you simplify complex numbers using the square root of negative 1, you shouldn't, you will not have a power greater than i to the first power. So we'll do these problems in class, but every single time you have i raised to some power, it can be reduced to one of these three things. Negative i, excuse me, negative 1, negative i, or positive 1. So that's why every time we see i squared, I always have to replace i squared with negative 1. Okay, now multiplying, just be careful with multiplying. Students too often say, whenever you see a set of parentheses, you automatically want to multiply these together. But look at the difference. My operation here is multiplication. On the previous examples, my operation in between was a plus or minus sign. So just be aware of the operation. So how do we multiply binomials? We FOIL. First, outer, inner, and then last is where my i squared comes into play. So minus 5i squared. Combining like terms, negative 2i plus 5i gives me positive 3i. I replace my i squared with negative 1. And I get plus 5. Now when we write complex numbers, we write the real part first, so a plus bi, and that would be my answer. Okay, so the last thing I would like you to do, please just copy these down for yourself in your notes, okay? Copy these three things down. You can put the examples in your notebook as well, but we'll do the examples together. Okay, we'll talk more about this and we'll finish up the notes in class.